Y'all, Leah was at the club. <laughs> Leah was at the Irish club gallivanting with using fake names. Got $3,000 in her bank account. What, is, what was my daughter into? <laughs> what was my daughter into at bars drinking and stuff? She's 16. She's 16. <laughs> Who was letting her in these places? And why is she? Okay. It was, it's fine. What's up y'all it's Jess welcome back to my channel today we are doing the next episode of unread unsolved last time we were on here we did a case of a rugby player named Ed who had been drugged and left in an alleyway and robbed right and we had to figure out who it was that did that to him who, who drugged him and left him in the alleyway he survived he, he didn't die like most of the other people in these cases but anyway we're not here to talk about and that that's done <laughs> that that's over and that's done uh we are here to talk about leah and that case and my husband sean and how he's trash and the main story <laughs> we're here to talk about the main story so last time i had a bunch of unread messages specifically about leah and her case and i decided to focus on the egg case that stupid egg case i decided to focus on that instead of looking at the Leah stuff. So let's go ahead and jump into the Leah stuff now and figure out the next steps on that. Let's go to Vanessa. Vanessa is the head teacher, y'all, at Leah's school. So she texts today and she said, hi, Kate, I don't know how to tell you this, but Ollie has caused quite a disturbance today in the mock exam. He got up, refused to listen to the staff when they asked him to sit down and stormed out of the exam room. I know he's under a lot of stress given the situation. I wanted to let you know. I said, he did what? <laughs> I'm so sorry, Vanessa. He was very upset this morning. Oh yeah, remember he said F you. He, he said F me. He, he was cussing me out this morning over text message. He didn't cuss me out in real life. But he was cussing me out over text message this morning. Vanessa said, if he needs time off from school, that's something we can discuss. I said, no, he's fine. He, he will be fine. I'll check in with him. Thank you. Can't believe he did that. All right, let's actually, let's go to Ollie. Okay. I text him. I text Ollie. I said, Ollie, where are you? What were you thinking? Vanessa told me you walked out of your exam. Ollie. Just tell me you're okay. Can we talk? And <laughs> Ollie said, okay. I said, I'm not okay with how you spoke to me or with you running out of your exams. That's not acceptable ever. However, I'm sorry I haven't been straight with you. You're right. I haven't been telling you everything about Leah. Ollie said, why not? I said, I've been trying to protect you. Ollie said, protect me from what, mom? This is an effed up situation. Something bad has happened. I'm not an idiot. I know that. I just want to understand what and see if there's any way I can help. I said, I understand that, bro. I think I was hoping this hadn't impacted you how it had me. I miss her so much and I was kidding myself thinking you aren't too. Ollie said, I miss her every day. I said, I know. I promise to share everything I know with you going forward. Every detail. He said, okay. And what about dad? I said, well, he lied, he's trash, he, and he lied about some things in his original statement. We're trying to work out why and what he was really doing. But to be honest, I think the reason he's lying might be more related to me and him and not Leah. Ollie said, oh, <laughs> I said, I'm sorry. I know how that must've looked this morning. Ollie said, I'm sorry too. I shouldn't have said what I said. You right. I said, you're lucky it's just a mock exam. He said, yep. I said, so are we okay? He said, yes, we're okay, as long as it doesn't happen again. And I said, I promise it won't happen again. Why am I talking to him like, the, I, I'm the mama. Like, why am I talking to him? Why am I apologizing to him after he cussed me out? Okay, it's, it's whatever, it's fine. Let's go to Rachel. Rachel is my sister. I said, Rachel, I need some help. Are you up? Ollie has completely lost it at me. And she said, what's happened? I said, he saw the Leah file updates. Sean's name is in it. And he thinks we're investigating Sean. Rachel said, are you? <laughs> I said, a lot of what Sean said doesn't track. So we're looking into it to find out why he lied. It also looks like he was having an affair because he's trash. Rachel said, what a total scumbag. I said, yep, I know. She said, who with? I said, we don't know yet. A blonde in her 20s, according to a witness. 
Rachel said, OMG, he's such a worthless little prick. <laughs> I said, well, Ollie is furious and stormed out of his exams today. Rachel said, oh, poor thing. His head must be all over the place. I said, I know. Rachel said, I think you need to be honest with him. I said, about what? And Rachel said, just tell him the truth. Sean wasn't being honest, so now they're looking into why. But it's most likely because you two were having problems. I said, I'm starting to worry that it's much worse than that. Too much about his behavior doesn't add up. Leah's bank account, lying about the hotel, whoever this woman is, suddenly leaving the country. Although I don't even know if I believe that right now. I don't believe it either. I don't think he's in... <laughs> I don't think he's in Asia. Rachel said, well then, you just tell Ollie the truth about his affair and leave out the rest. I said, yeah, I guess. Although Ollie was mad, I wasn't sharing everything with him. Rachel said, he wants to find Leah as badly as you, right? I said, yep. She said, I think you need to tell him that you'll share everything with him from now on and mean it. Hard details and all. I said, he's just a kid though. I'm trying to protect him. Rachel said, he's not just a kid. After what happened with Leah, he's never going to be just a kid again. He's a worried brother. As someone who cares just as much as you about finding her. And if Sean is involved somehow, then Ollie's going to find out at some point. But you wait until you have proof before you talk to him about that. I said, when did you become so wise, sis? She said, you know, traveling, finding myself, or perhaps too many self-help books. I said, I really appreciate it, Rach. She said, anytime, good luck. And I said, I'll need it. Okay, so that's why we told Ali, you know, bro, bro, look, it's all about you. It's like, it's your world, Ali. That's why I was talking to him like that, okay? Okay, I also text Patrick. Patrick is my sponsor, my AA sponsor. I said, Patrick, you there? He said, for you, of course, what's up? I said, I'm struggling. He said, I'm here, talk me through it. I said, I'm just dealing with a lot right now. There's noise everywhere, if you know what I mean. I just want to drink, just to turn down the volume for a bit. He said, yeah, I know that feeling. Had it all the time a few months back and ended up relapsing. And you know what I'm going to say next. I said, it didn't help with the noise. He said, just made it worse at the end and undid all the work I'd done for months. And you've done so much work to get to where you are, Kate. I think it's worth reminding yourself why you stopped drinking in the first place. I said, because I lose control and lash out and can't think clearly or do my job. He said, I'm not telling you anything you don't know already, but with new progress on Leah, you need to find a way to stay in control. I said, I know, I just need something. He said, I'm guessing you haven't kept up with your run it with all this going on. I said, nope. He said, get out of the house now and take it out on the road. I said, yeah, you're right, it can only help. And he said, remember, I'm here if you need anything. Okay, y'all, I got some emails here that I also wanna check out real quick. Um, here is Saul Henry. So Saul, remember, is a client of the company, a potential client, I think, of the company where Leah was interning. And remember, we didn't know that she had that internship at that job, but <laughs> we didn't know none of that. But he, this, this Saul man is the client of that company. So I emailed Saul. I said, hi, Saul. I'm contacting you regarding the disappearance of Leah Finch. She was in your meeting with Falcon Consulting taking notes. Did you speak to Leah that day or notice any strange behavior? Can you confirm the purpose of your meeting and the time it ran from and to? This is a pressing investigation. So please provide your answers quickly. We need to know any information you may have on Leah, however insignificant it may seem. Thanks, Kate. Saul said, Dear Kate, I have to say I was surprised to receive your email. Such a request for information would normally require an official police request and not simply an email. A bit of internet searching and you can imagine my surprise when I discovered that you are the missing girl's mother. While I don't appreciate the intrusion, I do understand how you must feel having lost your daughter. So we'll answer your questions. I only spoke to the girl briefly. Hello, how are you? Goodbye, that kind of thing. I didn't notice anything unusual other than she seemed very keen. Obviously, the firm wanted to make a good impression so everyone was on their best behavior. That includes the girl. As to the purpose of our meeting, not that it's relevant to your investigations, none of your business, but we wanted to update our accounting across our subsidiaries and Falcon Consulting were offering a cheap and fast solution. The meeting ran from 10 a.m. and finished by 11.30 a.m. I trust I've answered your questions sufficiently. If you have any further questions, contact my legal team. Okay, I had opened this email, y'all, accidentally the last time, <laughs> but we, we didn't read this the last time. It says coffee, and it's me to Victoria. Remember, Victoria was the boss at Falcon Consulting, that intern, the company that Leah was interning with. 
So I messaged Victoria. I said, hi, Victoria. Hope you're well. I was wondering if I could buy you a coffee tomorrow morning, please. So much has come to light over the past few days about the investigation that I'm struggling on a personal level to process it all, really. Sorry this is inappropriate to unload on you like this when I barely know you, but I'd love to hear more about your experiences of working with Leah. This is a side of her I never knew, and as a mom, I just love to hear more about her. And maybe I might find out something useful, but if not, I'd just love to hear more about my daughter. I can do first thing if that works for you. Thanks, Kate. And Victoria replied and said, nice to hear from you. Don't worry at all. This must be an incredibly difficult time for you. I'm happy I can help any way I can. Although I told the police everything I could think about in my statement. Hopefully Steve will be able to help more with his statement. They had a pretty nice rapport and probably had the chance to chat more than I did really. Steve is another employee at this Falcon consulting place. Let's meet at that coffee shop at the end of my road. I've got a meeting at nine, but can meet at 7.30 for half an hour or so. Does that work? And Kate said, thank you for that. Much appreciated. Look forward to seeing you then. Okay. So y'all remember last time there were some messages about the Leah case that I actively skipped during the, you know, we were trying to focus on the rugby player stuff. So I actively skipped this part of the conversation with Eric, but we coming back to it now. I, I messaged Eric. I said, hey, Eric, has Steve been in to leave his statement yet? The, co the co-worker at Falcon Consulting, right? Victoria just mentioned something about him and it reminded me. Eric said, you're chatting to Victoria? I said, I'm getting a coffee with her tomorrow first thing. He said, how come? I said, partly that I want to hear more about Leah from a personal level, but also maybe if I chat to her about Leah, it might jog her memory to something that could help. Worth a shot, right? Eric said, yeah, I don't see why not. Steve came in a bit earlier. Let me have a word with the guy who booked him in. I said, thanks, Eric. Need to know what his deal is. Eric said, just spoke to the guy who booked him in. He said he seemed pretty awkward and nervy. I said, how? He said, like in the way teenage boys often are, I think. But he mentioned that Danielle's treating him as a person of interest. I said, really? Why? He said he thinks something came up in his background check. He said he didn't know what, but Danielle was in there with him for ages. I said, but he didn't have a criminal record, did he? Eric said, no, it'd have been flagged if he did when he was added to the case file. You know what these things are like. It usually ends up being something minor. I said, yeah, but not always. Can you find out any more? He said, not right now, Kate. I literally only got two minutes with him and now he's tied up again. But it will all be in Leah's case file this evening. I said, I don't know if I can wait that long, Eric. <laughs> he said, I know this is a nightmare, but you need to just sit tight until we know more. I said, I'm really struggling with not being shown the full picture, Eric. He said, I know, but I can't exactly walk into Danielle's office when she's in with the top brass and demand she updates me on a case I'm not working on, can I? I said, no, I know you can't. Sorry, I'm just frustrated with this. He says, someone's just got back to me about something. Speak soon. Then he said, hey, Kate, I wanted to tell you this earlier, but I wanted to double check something first. But when I was at Iris earlier, I noticed something weird in the guest book. Remember, Iris was the club from the rugby case. He said, it might be nothing and this hasn't been confirmed yet, but I thought I recognized Leah's handwriting in the guest book. <laughs> in the club, in the club, Eric. I said, you kidding? He said, no, I just cross-referenced it with the handwriting from the homework diary. I mean, I'm no expert, but it looks pretty similar to me. I said, show it to me. He said, let me find the photo I took of it. It was from a few days before she went missing and it wasn't Leah's name in the guest book. I said, WTF, Eric, what name was it? He said, Terry Sanderson. I said, who? <laughs> he said, the name doesn't mean anything to you then? I said, I don't know. Now that I look at it again, it kind of rings a bell, maybe. He said, here's the photo. Let me know if you recognize her handwriting. There's no photo. <laughs> There's no, I don't have a photo on, okay. I read, y'all, y'all playing games, bro. I said, OMG, Eric, that's her handwriting, 100%. He said, you certain? I said, yes, that's her writing for sure. He said, okay, I'll add a note to her case file. Just so you know, we've sent this off to a forensic handwriting expert that we've worked with before. I said, Charles Lynch? He said, yeah, that's right. We've asked him to prioritize this, hoping we can get an answer back ASAP. Know why she put Australia as her location? I said, I don't know. That's where Rachel is now. You think it could be a reference to that? Eric said, maybe. It could also just be a silly joke, a made up name and location off the top of her head. I said, this doesn't add up. It seems like if Leah was there for work, she probably wouldn't make a silly joke. It sounds like she took this role pretty seriously. Have you checked if she was there again any other time? 
Eric said, it doesn't look like it, no, but Charles is checking every record to see if any other entries look similar. I said, I'll ask Victoria about this tomorrow morning. He said, okay, keep me posted. We can't really do much until we hear back from Charles on this. Currently, it's just handwriting that may or may not be Leah's. I said, yeah, I get that, but this feels pretty significant, doesn't it? He said, it really does, Kate, but there's not much we can run with just yet. And one of the teams just found something interesting about William for the right. Oh, okay. I don't care about that. <laughs> we already read that in the last episode. Y'all, Leah was at the club. <laughs> Leah was at the Iris Club gallivanting with using fake names. Got $3,000 in her bank account. What, is, what was my daughter into? <laughs> what was my daughter into at bars drinking and stuff? She's 16. She's 16. <laughs> Who was letting her in these places? And why is she? Okay. It's, it's fine. All right, y'all. I messaged Eric. I said, we need to talk about Leah. You free? Eric, <laughs> he said, hey, Kate. Sorry, Danielle was breathing down my neck to submit my report on the last case. Managed to talk one of the guys into finishing it off. I said, I got so many questions. I don't even know where to start. Leah was going to the Iris Club. How? She's 16, right? How is she doing this? Does she have a fake ID? Eric said, girls can usually get into bars underage, can't they? Might not have even needed to have a fake ID. I said, yeah, I guess. Still, we need to look into everything from the day Leah went there. Who was on reception? Who worked the bar? Which guests were there? Any CCTV of people coming and going? Everything. Eric said, I know, Kate, we'll get the team on it as soon as we get confirmation that this is Leah's handwriting. I said, we both know it's Leah's handwriting. You even recognized it from glancing at the guest book. He said, I know, but we're going to need more than our opinions. I'm no handwriting expert and you're Leah's mom who might be seeing what you want to see. I said, I'm not, Eric. <laughs> I'm not. He said, I know you're not, but that's how it's going to look. So we need to get confirmation from an independent expert before we get the green light to start knocking down doors at places like Iris. But we fast tracked it and as soon as we hear back, we can get moving. I said, well, I ain't gonna wait in the meantime. <laughs> he said, I thought you might say that. What are you thinking? I said, I need to find out who her plus one was. Eric said, Kayla. I said, she's gotta be our best option, right? She withheld info and then admitted going to a party with Leah, but said she was too drunk to tell us where it was, which I didn't believe for a second. Eric said, no, me neither. You know Kayla best, but would drinking underage be bad enough to lie and obstruct an investigation this serious? I said, no, there need to be more to it, and I need to find out what it is. Eric said, be careful though. Kayla's mom seems overprotective. Remember, she had cussed me out there one time. <laughs> she cussed me out. I said, yeah, she already warned me about talking to Kayla, right? He said, what are you going to do then? I said, I need to work that out. Is Leah's case file updated yet? Know any more about Steve yet and why he's being treated as suspicious? Eric said, let me see what I can find out. Looks like they're still writing it all up. I said, did you find out anything else about Steve? They must have found out something about him. Eric said, I'm not sure, Kate. I'm sorry. We're going to have to wait and see what's in the case file. Eric, you need to hurry up with the answer. You ain't got no answers, Sway. You ain't got the answers. Eric said, but I did get a heads up that there's another case that involves the Iris Club, too. Doesn't sound related at all to Leah. Something got stolen, I think, but it looks like that case might end up on my desk, too. I said, can you make sure it does and that I'm working it with you? Even if it's not related, it might give us more access to Iris to follow up on the Leah leads. He said, good thinking. We'll grab a word with Danielle on my way out and see. We'll message when I get home with the case file. And I said, thank you, Eric. Amazing. He said, you got something you can do to keep your mind off it until then? I said, I'll go for a run. Haven't ran much since Corey got in touch. He said, yeah, good to keep that up for sure. I need to get back in the gym. I said, maybe when you're not doing the work of four people. And he said, tell me about it. And then he said, just getting back home now. I said, any luck with Danielle for the next case? He said, yep, charmed her into sending it our way tomorrow. Should find out details then. And I said, brilliant. Okay, Eric. Okay, Eric sending me Leah's case file. So let's go ahead and look at Leah's case file. Okay, Eric said, I need to warn you, there's some stuff in there about Leah's colleague, Steve, that might be tough to read, but I'll leave it to you to digest it and we'll talk tomorrow morning. Unless you want someone to talk to before then, we'll sleep with my phone next to my bed in case. Take care, Eric. Eric, don't be flirting with me. Do not be flirting with me, Eric. All right, y'all, we got some new developments. I'm gonna disappear. We got some new development. Let's go ahead and read it. Whilst interviewing a former manager of Steve Anderton, 
A historic allegation of stalking was uncovered. A female colleague at Brynworth Leisure Center, Gemma Stevenson, reported him over a romantic approach he made to her, which she rebuffed as she had a boyfriend. Weeks later, she reported seeing Steve walking past her house. Steve claims that he had to pass her house to go to his grandma's where he was living at the time. Steve claims he was out of town at a marketing conference on the day of Leah's disappearance. However, no one from the conference has yet come forward confirming that they saw Steve at the conference. Steve claims he drove there himself and returned late that night around 9 p.m., several hours after Leah was reported missing. Further inquiries are being made to try and corroborate his statement. While investigating staff at Iris Members Club in relation to separate crime, Detective Eric Jones noticed handwriting in the visitor's book that appeared to match Leah's from her homework diary. This appears to have used the name Terry Sanderson. Kate confirms that she thinks this is Leah's handwriting, but images have been sent off to a calligraphy expert to verify. Kate also mentions that the name Terry Sanderson sounds familiar and will look into this more herself. All right, y'all, here is the guest book um terry sanderson is who we looking for here you go terry sanderson plus one address australia reason for visit business comments love this place why would leah even sign the guest book if she wasn't even if she was trying to be low-key and off the radar why is she signing guest books and stuff Y'all, just for kicks and giggles, I want to look at the rest of this. I want to look at the rest of these names. We got Anton Jakes from London, Michelle Oakes, Steve Lovis. I don't know what that says. Martin Drakes, Emma Belford plus one, Bedford plus one, Harry Monks, Oma something something. Okay. Okay, this is the interview between Danielle Harris and Steve Anderton at Whitford Police Station. Danielle says, Steve Anderton, we have brought you in to be questioned in relation to the disappearance of Leah Finch. You are here voluntarily and can leave at any time. You have declined to bring a legal representative for the interview. Do you agree to answer every question truthfully and to the best of your knowledge? And Steve says, yes. She said, your answers will be recorded and anything you say may be submitted as evidence in a court of law. Do you understand? He said, yes. She said, is it true you worked with Leah Finch at Falcon Consulting until her disappearance? He said, yes. <laughs> Very short answers. Danielle said, what was your relationship with Leah like? He said, good, I guess. We got on all right. She said, did you have a relationship outside of work? He said, nope, we were just colleagues. I never saw her out of work. She said, did you have a romantic interest in Leah? He said, what? <laughs> Pause. No, of course not. She was a kid. She said, when did you last see Leah? He said, the Tuesday before she went missing. Danielle said, you know when she went missing? Steve paused and said it was all in the papers. Danielle said, why didn't you come forward with this information? You must have seen the calls for information in the news. He pauses again and said, I assumed you all knew about Leah's job and you'd be in touch if you needed a statement from me. Danielle said, do you have any further information about Leah's disappearance? Steve said, no, if I did, I'd share it. Pause. Leo was nice to me and I want to help if I can. Danielle said, what do you mean she was nice to you? He said, I don't know. She was friendly. She wasn't judgy or bitchy. Pause. <laughs> like most girls that age. Pause. She didn't look at me like she thought she was better than me. Why he keep pausing? <laughs> Danielle said, do you have problems with teenage girls? He said, what? No. She said, what time did you last see Leah the Tuesday before she went missing? He said, around three, I think. I dropped in to see Victoria quickly about something and Leah was there. Danielle said, did you speak to her? He said, I said hello and goodbye, and that was about it. Like I say, I only dropped in. Danielle said, where were you at the time of Leah's disappearance? He said, I was out of town at a marketing conference. Victoria can confirm this. She got me my pass. Danielle said, we'll look into that. What can you tell me about the accusations of stalking from when you worked at Brynworth Leisure Center? Steve said, oh, there it is. <laughs> there it is. You know, I didn't do anything wrong, apart from asking out a girl who had a boyfriend. Is that a crime? Danielle said, you were seen walking past her house several times after the complaint was made. He said, yeah, my grandma lived on the next street. I had to walk past her house to go there. Danielle said, only you didn't, did you? You could have walked around. We looked at the maps and this was noted in the original case. 
Steve said that would have taken longer. <laughs> that would have taken much longer. Danielle said, and how do you explain statements at the time saying, I quote, he was just standing outside staring at the house like 20 minutes at a time before moving on. He's scaring me. Steve said, look, I explained it to an officer back then. I didn't know she was in. You ever liked a girl who doesn't feel the same? Sometimes it takes a moment before you can move on. So I stopped outside her house one time. So what? I was just dealing with being rejected. Danielle said, you were seen running away from her house one night. Steve said, her boyfriend saw me through the window after I left my grandma's house and I had to jet. He already threatened me. Pause. <laughs> I wasn't going to hang around till he attacked me, was I? Danielle said, we need to verify your grandma's address. He said, all right, sis, fine. And she said, that's all for now. We'll be in touch with further questions. Okay, y'all, that's all the updated case file had. Okay, Rachel is messaging me, though. I text Rachel. I said, Rach, we found out something about Leah. Maybe the biggest lead so far. Looks like she went to this private members club just before she went missing. We found out what looks like her handwriting on the guest log, and we're looking into everything now. But there's something weird about this. She had a plus one, so I'm trying to work out who that is. But for her address, she put down Australia. And in the feedback column, she said, love this place. And I'm trying to work out whether that means something with you being in Australia. Eric thinks Leah might have been making a joke here as she used a fake name too. But I think there's something more to it. Almost like she's trying to tell me something I don't know. Did Leah ever talk to you about Australia? Or say anything that makes you think this could mean something? Or give some clue about where she is or what she was thinking before she went missing? Please get back to me as soon as you can. Rachel, wake up. Wake up, girl. <laughs> I don't know the time difference, but wake up. Here is an email that I sent to Kayla, who is Leah's friend. Leah's friend from school. I messaged Kayla. I said, Kayla, I know your mama told me not to contact you again, but here we are. <laughs> I don't see any other option right now. We have reason to believe that Leah attended a party at the Iris Club shortly before she disappeared. We know she was there with a plus one. And with everything that came out about you and Leah going to a party that you said you couldn't remember, I firmly believe you were her plus one this night. It's just a matter of time before we find out for sure. But I want you to come forward if this is you. It will play out better for you if you do. This is the most significant development we've had in the Leah investigation in months. And you know I will leave no stone unturned until I get to the bottom of it. So please, please, Kayla, just be 100% honest with me now. Was this the party you told us about? Did you go to Iris with Leah? Did she meet someone there? If so, please tell us everything now, girl. Don't withhold no information. This could be vital to finding Leah. And you know that I will not stop until I get to the bottom of this. I will help you if you tell me everything that you know. Okay. So <laughs> that's what I that's what I messaged Kayla. Her mama gonna cuss me out again, but okay. All right, and we got some more photos, y'all. Okay, this is the case file that we just read, the interview between Danielle and Steve Anderton. And I highlighted when Steve said she was a kid. And then I also highlighted when he paused and said, I assumed you all knew about Leah's job and you'd be in touch if you needed a statement from me. All right, what's the next? item okay here go some more highlights y'all danielle said you were seen walking past her house several times after the complaint was made talking about that old co-worker that stalking case and then i highlighted he's scaring me and steve i highlighted steve's response you ever liked a girl who doesn't feel the same sometimes it takes a moment before you can move on i was just dealing with being rejected okay all right, Steve, you something about you ain't right, but okay. Okay, we got some notes about Steve. Allegations of stalking, friendly with Leah. Leah turned him down. Did he get nasty, obsessed with Leah, jealous, violent? How did he react when she stopped coming into work? Any signs of guilt? Speak to Victoria about him tomorrow. Tomorrow. All right, y'all, so we got to wait till tomorrow to talk to Victoria and figure out what is going on with this Steve man. And he, something about him ain't right. He's shady. He's shady. Everybody in Leah's life was shady, including Leah, because that girl has been lying from the very first episode of this series. Like, I don't even, <laughs> I don't even know who did anything at this point, because it could be Leah lying. It could be these 48 characters in this story that have something to do with Leah's disappearance 
and just withholding information. I don't know what my daughter was into. I really don't know. My daughter might be one of the killers or something in the next case. I don't know. I don't know. Listen, I, I don't know. <laughs> But that's it, y'all. Thanks so much for watching. Be sure to subscribe. Next time, we'll probably be back with another case because remember, the next case is going to be about the Iris Club. We got that little tidbit of information from Eric at some point in here, but that'll be next time. That'll be next time. We'll probably have another case. Hopefully, I can solve it correctly this time. Didn't solve the last one correctly, but hopefully, we'll be able to solve this next one correctly. Thanks so much for watching, y'all. Be sure to subscribe if you have not already, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.